What began as a garage fire this morning turned into an evacuation by late today. A fire in the city's east end sent smoke billowing high into the sky. Our Sean Irvin was at the scene most of the day and has our first report tonight. Sean. Well, Tara, at the beginning of this fire, there were seven engines at the scene. And initially, at least, it didn't seem that the smoke and flames were that overwhelming. But things quickly changed as the day went on. In one minute, this auto repair shop blaze seemed almost under control. But in the next minute, the smoke became overwhelming. Inside, three cars and a ton of products used to repair vehicles are ablaze. Joe Bowen works across the street and was one of the first to notice the fire. There was pretty big flames coming out that door. They were probably about twice the height of the building, at least, I'd say. The owners of the shop managed to escape the flames. Too upset to appear on camera, they concurred with the fire department's assessment that somehow some fuel had ignited. Firefighters with full breathing apparatus took a defensive strategy. It was too dangerous to go inside the building, and before too long, the rear portion collapsed. Beyond the fire danger, the unknown risk of chemicals resulted in the Ministry of Environment being called in. There's lots of flammables. There's at least 30 tires in there. There's three vehicles, including a large tow truck, used motor oil, which would be one of the things you'd worry about the most. Beyond the accelerants inside the garage, fire officials are also concerned about three trailers outside. Each one contains spray foam insulation, which could also serve to further fuel the fire. Watching the smoke billow is David Summers. He owns the trailers and lives next door. Ironically, his company is called 911, and on this day, he acknowledges under the extreme heat, the response is appropriate. And that product is both explosive and highly flammable. So, and it, it has to reach a fairly high temperature, but with the flames that close by it, I mean, that was part of the concern. And for David, another concern, his daughter was stuck next door to the flames. She's autistic and she doesn't understand these sort of things. So, you know, there's all these firefighters and they're knocking on the door and she's told not to answer the door under any circumstances. So she didn't really know what to do. And as it turns out, David's daughter was among those that would have to leave at least temporarily because three hours after the fire began, fire officials determined they were going to have to do some sort of evacuation. That mostly included area businesses and our Victoria Matten has been following that story this afternoon. Residents in the immediate area of the fire were told to leave their home hours after the fire started. I could tell when I came home about half hour ago that something was going on, but to hear it's toxic, that's a little scary. And as we came out the front door, that's when we saw the firemen. And then, you know, they're like, do you live there? And we're like, yeah. And they're like, we're evacuating. So we're like, I'm like, tell Justin, tell dad not to come home. All businesses and residents on streets directly east of the blaze have been evacuated. Well, it's kind of out of the blue. <laughs> I just get woken up by my sister Dana here and it's like we got to evacuate. The Ministry of the Environment has been called in to monitor the air downwind of the fire. London's Deputy Fire Chief Brian George says it's unclear what's in the smoke right now. Different paints and thinners and, and that when you can start combining those you're not really sure what's inside uh, those and what they create when they burn together. Uh, creates a toxic soup which is which creates the toxins in the air uh, and that's what we're concerned about. London police have directed buses to remain at Prince Charles Public School as well. Parents of bus children were contacted and asked to pick up their children at the school. Those who are being evacuated and don't have any place to go are being led to these two LTC buses that have been provided. We've created a, uh, a, a staging point for them on the buses. With the, they're, they're warm there and they're opening up Carling Heights as a, as a warming station for them. Residents like Carol Keep were grateful for the notice from emergency staff. And they're doing a great job at going door to door, getting everybody out. So I have no concerns in that area. London police asked the public to avoid the area, including the residents wanting to return home. Victoria Matten, CTV News. Okay, we do want to update you on the situation here tonight on Childers Street. The evacuation order remains in place. You can see the fire trucks behind me. However, the broader situation, the evacuation order has now been lifted. That affected numerous streets extending out towards Highbury and uh, back out uh, onto bridges. So at this moment, only Childers Street is impacted by the evacuation order. However, we should point out that at this point, the fire is still burning down the street from me.